we're back on the roof. So we got no cool call. I was here on a PM and somebody came up here and was like, hey, uh, this one's not working. So anyway, this one's not cooling. So we're gonna go ahead and see what's up. So uh, here we go. So we're checking 24 volts. Yep, we got it. OG to C. Make sure we got fan call. Yep. And we want to see if we're getting Y1 to C. Yep. So we do have a call. The contactor is not closing. So we got to see what's going on. So this guy has a high pressure trip. So let's see what happens when we push it. Filters on this one weren't that dirty, and now it's got clean ones. The indoor coil is clear, so we gotta find out why it tripped on high pressure. Sorry for the wind noise; it's super windy right now. Uh, pressures are looking alright-ish. Um, some cooling's wrong because I have them hooked up to the discharge. This does have a liquid line, but I want to see what the discharge pressure is, since that's what this is connected to. This is set to trip at 485 psi, and we are currently at 300. 31 psi so it's nowhere near tripping so i don't know why it tripped but i've come across a lot of these linux units that have this particular one and they just randomly trip sometimes it's kind of annoying but uh, yeah so i'm not sure what's going on with that um i'm going to move this to the liquid line check the charge so um i am measuring my liquid temperature here so if we took a take our liquid temperature we have uh, 93.8, well, 90, we'll say 94, and we have 83.7, so we'll say 84, so that's 10 degree approach, right? So we take our liquid temperature and we subtract that from our ambient temperature going into the coil. That gets us our approach, so we're about 10 degrees. So um, Lennox likes to do it that way on some of their units. Now, if I'm correct, we should actually have an approach chart on here. Uh, yep, yeah, here we do. Cool. So, so you can see here, approach method. So we take our liquid temperature minus our ambient. So we have a t about a 10 degree and it says it should be 11 plus or minus uh, one degree. So refrigerant charge is good. So that's a nice, easy, uh, quick way to check the charge without having to put gauges on. So, you know. So yeah, you guys always telling me, hey, you got, you need to use your probes. Well, I do use my probes. So it's usually I'm using the gauges when I'm changing a compressor or if I know I'm recovering or, you know, having to charge from empty, then I'm usually using that. Otherwise I'm using these. And then my little shorts where I'm giving you tips I normally use these. Those are just some tips that I use when I actually do use gauges. So anyway, enough with that rant. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and monitor this for a little while. And I'm going to keep it on the discharge line just to make sure it's not doing something kind of weird. So I'm going to go finish my PM and then we'll come back on this one and see what's up. But yeah, it looks like I'm maxed out like 350, 355, oh, is it climbing? 356, oh, it's starting to climb. 357. Oh, drop down. Yeah, so it's hovering right around 360. So we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, we'll probably just do a uh, trend on it. All right, so I moved my gauge onto the uh, liquid line. So this is our actual pressures. Uh, so everything's looking normal except our suction's a little bit on the low side, and I think that's just because the coil is dirty. I just asked them if they wanted me to clean it, and they said no. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at on that. So. Uh, we got about 10 degrees subcool, which I would say is probably okay. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be because it doesn't say anywhere on the charge chart. Uh, Lennox wants me to go strictly by approach and pressures. So my high side pressure, my discharge pressure, that's where it should have been. It was about 360, it says 365. Um, so, uh, and then my, my suction is supposed to be like 130 something, but it's like 119, but I think that's just due to low airflow. So, plus the ducts are just terrible. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure it's okay. 
as far as refrigerant charge goes. Our discharge temperature is 47.8 degrees, so that's doing pretty good. And it's about 80 something degrees in there, so yeah, well, it's probably like 70 something degrees. I don't think it's 80, but yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much good. So when it comes to approach, this is something that Linux wanted. I don't know if you guys saw my video, but I have that video where it's got that little tube going through it. So that's how you measure approach. Basically, you fill it up with oil, you stick a thermometer in there, and then uh, the temperature would transfer to the oil and to your thermometer, which would give you a more accurate reading on your liquid temperature. Then you subtract the liquid temperature from your ambient air temperature, and that gives you your approach. If your approach is higher than your target, uh, you're low on charge if your uh, temperature is lower than your target and that means you're overcharged i believe so yeah but uh yeah that's a linux thing i, I think they still do that but it's kind of nice I, I prefer to do that like you know just to kind of get a um, a quick reading without having to throw gauges on um, it's a less invasive and then if it's off then you can throw your gauges on but if it's right on then just leave it um, but anyway, yeah, that's another way you can tell. But unless you know what the target is, it doesn't do you any good. So typically Linux will have a approach charging chart on it. Um, I don't know about the newer ones because I haven't seen them. But I know like the, you know, like 2015 to 2019, I think they have them still. Uh, and anything before that, they have them too. All right, just to cover my bases here, we're going to go ahead and check this run cap for the condenser fan motor, which is supposed to be 10 uh, microfarads. And we are at 9.3. And this is a plus or minus 10%. So 10% of 10 is one. So 10 minus one equals nine. So nine is the lowest it could be. Still within spec, still good. And honestly, if it wasn't, it's still high enough not to really cause any issues. And I guess we'll check the amp draw on that fan motor because I forgot to do that. All right, let's see here. So our outdoor fan, single phase, 1.7 is our FLA. So let's see what we're running at. 0.991, one. okay, so we're good. Run cap's good too, so yeah. Compressor's at 9.73, 9 13.7, so we're good to go. Our locked router is at 83.1. So yeah, I'd say we're good. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've been watching this thing for a while. I've trended it out. Pressure never got past 360 PSI, so I think this thing's just effective. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend replacement and uh, we'll go from there but uh, anyway hopefully this helps you out so thanks for watching make sure to like and subscribe comment and tell me what a horrible technician i am and uh, follow me on instagram and facebook and if you like the tools i use ooh, uh, visit my amazon store to go for yourself thanks for watching